Although it's six celebrations are in order in Monroe County, it is turning 200 years old. Quite a birthday. Florida Keys, of course, full of rich history as a world-renowned tourist destination. And tonight, CBS News Miami's Hank Tester provides a blast to the past. Monroe County, the Florida Keys, Key West, the Conk Republic, up and down US-1. They're never far from a party, an event, or just laid-back fun. Now a real reason to celebrate big time. 2023 is special. This is uh, the 200th anniversary of the creation of Monroe County. 200 years, a unique history and landscape, both charming and challenging those who have come to live or enjoy what tourism promoters proudly claim is so close to perfect, so far from normal. People that get into, they want to investigate the Jimmy Buffett lifestyle and find out that, hey, this isn't so bad. John Bardis, musician, politician, once the mayor of Marathon in the Middle Keys. Once you're down here, you found your little uh, place in the islands, you're doing what you want to do. Exactly what Keys officials and civic leaders did in April of 1982 when the feds set up roadblocks looking for drugs and immigrants. Keys leadership with tongue in cheek declared the independent conch republic, declared war on the United States, immediately surrendered. In the midst of the uproar, the feds backed off on their roadblocks. The mythical Conch Republic was born. This sort of Conch, Cuban, American culture all mixed together into this unique combination uh, really makes the Florida Keys uh, an amazingly uh, diverse, interesting, and absolutely unique place in Florida. From the early days, the New Englanders to the Cubans, freed slaves, the Bahamian conks, both black and white, in the early 1800s came for opportunity. Monroe County, independent and diverse from the beginning. Had a lot to do with the, the, the salvers, had a lot to do with, you know, the cigars and the tobacco, had a lot to do with, um, well, some of it had to do with uh, basically plain old privacy, piracy. The wreckers plucking cargo from sailing ships had crashed into the reefs up and down the Keys. Later, Cubans escaping oppressive Spanish rule in Cuba set up major cigar rolling operations. At one time, Key West was the richest and largest city in the Florida Territory and the most diverse. Along the way, there was a serious need for government up and down the island chain. So the Florida legislature said, OK, well, We'll make a new county in all of South Florida, south of Lake Okeechobee, and made it Monroe County, <laughs> the massive area. That was July 3rd, 1823, 200 years ago. Well, a lot's happened since. Of course, today's world-renowned tourist industry, fishing, both commercial and recreational. After the turn of the 20th century, Henry Flagler built a railroad that connected Monroe County with the mainland. Tourists flowed into the subtropical paradise. In the late 1940s, President Harry Truman, a visitor, establishing Key West Little White House. There was a Cuban Missile Crisis, troops and missiles at the ready. The Mariel boat lift and 1994 rafter crisis, Cuba just 90 miles away. And hurricanes? Through it all, Monroe County, the Florida Keys, held a unique lure. People have come down here for, you know, decades upon decades finding inspiration. I mean, from some of the classic writers like Ernest Hemingway, who spent time down here. So did Truman Capote, Tennessee Williams, Robert Frost, a lifestyle Jimmy Buffett popularized and John Bartis sings about. Jesus looks out the window, right on our 75. It's just an inspiration just to be able to hang out Look at our waters, look at our wonderful islands, the things, our beaches are getting out on the water, and that does inspire a lot of songs. Plenty to sing about, plenty to celebrate, an amazing history all the way from Key Largo to Key West. I'm Hank Tester in Key Largo, CBS News, Miami.